So far, we've created a list. We added people to the list. We looked at exporting lists and various other things. Let's carry on with lists. I've mentioned a few times that we should have a single list wherever possible. The reasons are numerous. Two of the main reasons are, well, one, cost. If you have the same email address in multiple lists, you're paying in MailChimp multiple times because we pay for the number of subscribed email address across all our lists. Most importantly is legal reasons. When a person unsubscribes in MailChimp, they do so at the list level. So if you have the same person in multiple lists, they unsubscribe, so they unsubscribe from one list, you then send them email marketing to another list, you've broken the law. So let's look at combining lists in MailChimp. You won't see me at the screen at the moment, just so that you can see the full screen. So you can see my lists here. There are two ways of combining the lists. One is we could click the down arrow next to one of the lists and down the bottom click combine lists. This will retain our reporting, but our fields do need to be the same in the lists. The other way is to go into our list itself, export our list and do that for each of our lists, combine our lists in Excel and then import the data back into a new list. We will lose our reporting, but some people find this an easier way of combining lists. Still in our list, so I'm just going to click on list just to show where I am, and I'm going to click on my list name. Let's, let's look at what we call the contact profile. So I'm just going to click on, on the email address of any contact. Don't be too concerned. You're not going to see a picture of some bald guy there, unless you're bald, of course. That's me. Right, so I've added my image, so you can see my image there. I have e-commerce enabled, so I see demographic information. Not all of us will see this. Uh, by the way, I'm 46, not 65 plus. This star rating, called the contact rating, it used to be called member rating, is important. Everyone starts as a two. All our contacts, as we add them, start as a two. As people engage with our marketing more, they go up three, four, five. If they're not engaging with our marketing, they go down to a one. So for example, if we've sent this person multiple uh, email campaigns and they've opened a fair number of them and clicked a fair number, that would be a three or four. If they hadn't opened any of them, that would be a one. So this contact rating uh, corresponds to a great degree, not totally, but to a great degree, if we scroll down, to the activity section here. So this activity section would show uh, the campaigns I've sent the person, for example, the e-commerce purchases uh, he or she have made, etc. We could add a note. Oh, and by the way, on any of this data that we have in our contact profile, we can segment or target our marketing. So we can target towards all three stars, for example, and so on. Tags I'll explain very shortly. In email marketing, open and click rates are important. I'm important measures. I explain it later in the reporting section, but an open rate is uh, the proportion of campaigns we've sent this person that they've opened. Click is proportion where they've clicked a link or tapped a link in, in the email campaign we've sent them. Total revenue average order would, uh, would apply if we have e-commerce enabled. Various profile information, we could edit that. We have various other information, such as their favorite email client, we could edit that. And right down the bottom of the screen, we have social profiles. Social profiles is a paid feature, and it costs 10% per list of our monthly cost to MailChimp. When we enable this, MailChimp uses a third party and once a day, the email addresses in our list will be compared to, or it will be checked whether that person has, for example, a LinkedIn and Twitter account and so on, and it'll bring back a minimum set, sorry, a minimum set of um, information such as first name, last name, location, approximate age, and uh, gender. Okay, so that's that's 
uh, the profile we're seeing. Lots of information, we can act on that. So I'll go back into my list, and I'll just get myself back on the screen there. So we're back in our list. I'll click on my list name. All this data we can we can sort on, but one thing I haven't covered yet is tags. A tag is a label, and you can label it for your own needs. So it's data we can add. So for example, if you're a not-for-profit or charity, you might want to tag people as volunteers or staff or donors or board members or anything else. The reason we tag them is the same as for any other data, so that we can target our marketing towards specific people. We want to send an email to all our staff or whatever. Again, a tag is a label that you can use for your own purposes. The limits on tags is you can have as many tags as you, you would like in MailChimp, but a tag must be a maximum of 100 characters. Let me show you how tags work. So let's say, okay, so I sell, for example, dog coats. Maybe I sell for different breeds. So I want to know what breed of dog each person owns. I can quite simply click people and go add remove tags. And let's say these people own poodles. I could go poodle, for example. Click poodle. And you'll notice I now have tagged these people Poodle. Let's tag some other people that they have Bulldogs. We'll include some of the same people. I can go add remove tags, just create a new tag. I could use my existing Poodle or I'll just create a new one. Bulldog, for example. And you'll notice now it's tagged Poodle, Bulldog, Bulldog and Poodle and so on. And I, I can then target people if I've got a sale on Bulldog coats. I can tar target people with Bulldogs. Tags can also be managed under Manage Contacts, Tags. So you could manage your tags here. You will also would have noticed in the last video when I imported people, during the import MailChimp said, do I want to uh, tag those, those people during the import? Uh, so you can do it in a, in a bulk way that way. So if you had an event, for example, you had the attendees in a list that you're importing into uh, into MailChimp, you could tag them and say they all attended XYZ event at that time. Okay, so nice and easy. So that's tags. Tags is just data. That's all it is. Let's go back to our list. Right, lots and lots of data. The way we use one list and we divide that list is by something called segments. And the best way is demonstrating it. So let's say, for example, I want to know all people uh, that are in the USA because I want to target all people that are in the USA with my USA store. So what I'm looking for here is, oh, I didn't spell that correctly, so sorry about that, where my country equals USA. I could click on new segment and just meet my criteria. So it's just a filter where, so I find my field, and my field in this case is called country county, sorry, country, where my country is or is not or contains, starts with, so let's just do that, starts with u.s. Preview segment, so this is all people, okay, my list is very small, um, where my county, country is USA, and now I can just save my segment people in USA, for example. You can call it whatever you want, your, your uh, contacts don't see it, and I would then save it. So just to show you this, I'm going to click the cross to go out of my segment. I'm just going to go back into my list to refresh it. And if I click view segment, you'll now see there my people in the USA are. This is dynamic. This is automatically calculated in that as people meet, so we add people to our list, people are taken out of our list, whatever. As they add it and they meet this criteria where they have a, a country field of USA, they automatically, let's call it, added to the segment. But let's get a bit more technical because we can, we can go up to five levels deep in our search. So let's say I want all people in the country of USA who have a tag of Poodle. I can do that. So I want 
country USA tag poodle. So I'll create a segment. New segment. I've got two criteria, remember? So I could change this to any, which would be that or that, but I'm not, I want both. So I'll go all where my country, and again is um, is USA. And where my tags, I'll just scroll down here, where my tags, where contact is tagged, Poodle, for example. So USA and Poodle, preview segment. So, okay, my list is very, very small, but these are, are, are uh, people that are tagged Poodle um, that are in the USA. And again, I will just save my segment and I'll go uh, people, oopsie, in USA with Poodles. Save. Now, when I come to my actual marketing, I can tag it, uh, target these people. I'll just click the cross to get out of there. Okay. Let's look very quickly at our contact rating. We can, of course, search on contact rating and so on. So I could go new segment where my contact rating is two star, is greater than or whatever. So I can do it that way as well. What gets really clever with this, just bear with me, is I can do my segmentation as well on whether a person even clicked or whether they were sent a certain email or so on. So I could go new segment where my campaign activity, okay, this is, this is not very good at the moment because I haven't sent any campaigns from this account, where they opened any of the last five campaigns or any of the campaigns in the last three months. So what we could do is any people that aren't engaging, we could go campaign activity, Let's go, did not open any, you know, all campaigns within the last three months, for example. And these people then aren't engaged, and we can send them another one, you know, another email saying a re-engagement campaign or something like that. So again, the way we the way we divide a single list is into segments. So as long as our data are correct in our list, we keep our data correct in our single list, and then we target our segments. Of course, some people still will need multiple lists if you have distinctly different brands and so on. But for most of us, we could do with just having a single list. Please join me for the next video where we're going to go into the slightly more advanced features of lists.